you're welcome to pro design we're still on the fundamentals of sketchup and we are welcome to the lesson three of course we are going to continue from where we left off in the last lesson and today we want to firstly recall that in the last tutorial we dealt with some some of the basic tools in the getting started toolbar and we dealt with the selection tool the eraser tool the lines tool and of course the push and pull tool then the offset tool so uh, we are still on the getting started toolbar and these are the basic tools that we'll be needing to create our first 3d models and to explore a lot about sketchup so in this lesson we are dealing with lines arcs let's start with the arcs tools so there's something with, with some of the sketchup tools we see the drop down arrow so whenever we see the drop down arrow it means that uh, there are still more to what you see so for instance now we see this drop down arrow on the lines it shows that there's more to just that symbol you're seeing so there's another type of that too so we have the line that's a straight line and the free end so what the line two does is that it creates a straight line from one point to another so from a point to another point is straight to any point you're drawing you just need two points to establish that straight line so that's that about the line too so then we go to the free hand so the free hand like the name implies draws along your the movement of your hand so let's see so as you see as i move my hand as i move the custom it follows so without any restriction so it just follows that way so that is the free hand let's um, get rid of that then this is the axe so like i said before we see the drop down arrow so that means if i click on that there are there are other options so we see the first act so let's just do that so the first act to uh we, we see it it works with the compass symbol so that means it centers about a point so you we've established the first point then you 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 go to the next point then you start to draw your your hack so once you click on the next point it goes along and about that point so to create a circular line around and about the point that you established so that is how the, the hack tool works so then the next is the two point arc so i love to do to use this um to use this tool a lot because it's i feel it's a lot easier for me so you might find another uh easier for you so the, the what you do by that is like the name implies you just click the first you say you establish the first point so by clicking on the first point that you want so once the first point is clicked let's see that then you go to the next point to establish the width of your arc so then the next that's the third click will be for the height of your arc so this is very easy for me um, and i've used it i use it a lot on a lot of projects to create my hacks to create archway and the like so it's just simple the first point then the second point for the width the first and second for the width then the third point you click in is for the height so very great too so that the 
third is the three point arc like the name implies as well you need three points so to make the hack stable so this the first the first point then you move to the next point then you see it's not stable then it needs you to click on the third point you see this is just the opposite of the first arc which is about a point at the center this is not about the point at the center so the 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 last is the pi so it is also about a center so you draw you establish with a compass uh, symbol you establish the first and the center whereby you want it to uh, to to be drawn about so let's click at the, the center then we click on the second then we just go round about the pi is almost the same as the first act two the only difference is that this forms a face once it's once you're done and the other does not so they are just the same you see what i'm saying so you establish then you draw around the bubble this does not form a face once you're done with this it just leaves you with the line about the center while the pi to create a face so let's move on so the next is a shapes tool it also has a drop down arrow which we're going to click on to check what it contains so it has rectangle rotated rectangle that's circle and it has polygon so we're going to check the rectangle the rotated rectangle circle polygon and how they function as well so let's click and check the rectangle too so we can select or we we press r on our keyboard to activate the rectangle too if we see our status bar we see that it's telling us to select first corner so i'm just going to go right and select the first corner then it tells us also to select opposite corner or enter value so the next thing it's waiting for us to do is to select uh, the opposite corner but we can also see a dotted blue line which represents um, equal sides so once you see that blue dotted line diagonally it shows us that this is a square and in order for us to uh, pin that down and to continue with that same ratio of the equal size, we're going to press shift. So once you hold shift, we can uh, be sure that it is stable. So no matter how we drag, no matter how we uh, move our mouse, it still stabilizes and all within the ratio and all the sides are equal so we see now that a square formed so a square face was formed and now we're gonna try another way so just clicking on the opposite corner anywhere as uh, we, 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 we love to so that is another way as well so let's try um, a more precise way a, the more precise way is to click on the first corner before clicking the next corner just go to the dimension that's the measurement bar so type in 1200 comma which means that you are specifying the length and the breadth of your so the length the first before the comma is the length then the uh, the value after the comma is the breadth so that is how to precisely draw your rectangle so we move on to the rotated rectangle um, by the name you see rotated so it's about a point so the first point is to specify a fixed length of uh, 
of our rectangle and then the next point is to specify the width of our rectangle so, so we go to the circle so the circle um if we check the measurement bar you see this site there which represents the segment so if i draw this so it contains now it has 24 segments that's 24 sites a circle is a combination of segments so actually it contains lines at uh, the same angle so we see i want to change the side now once you select your circle don't click yet then just type in your preferred site now type in 50 i want to see now the segment seems smoother than the 24 so now in order to make it more visible for us and to compare so i will select again then change it to 24 so here we'll see the differences here we'll see the difference we change it to 24 and then we we'll see now that the first is smoother than the second it has smoother edges so this is going so we change this to 12 to see uh, even a clearer difference now then we go to six sides so we see gradually it's turning to a polygon so it is very amazing and it's that's how it works so let's move to the polygon the polygon is just um like uh the circle so, but you just tweak the side so now we have the, the eight um eight-sided polygon so once we click on our polygon we can change or we press we click on escape to to change the side now we've changed to six so we click escape again to change to four then we drag and then it goes on and on and on and that is the that is that about the rectangle or the shapes too we go to the move to so the move to now sketchup does not have a particular tool or a specific tool to to copy so this is the reason is because there are quite a number of tools that can duplicate objects or duplicate your model so uh, that's the reason why there's no specific tool for copying and that's where the move tool comes in uh, andy you can use the move tool to uh, to move an object from a point to another you can also use it to accomplish uh, a copy function so let me show you how the move tool works um, now we're just going to create a simple geometry or a shape so using our basic tool so now I've, i want to i've created a rectangle surface i want to create a make group so i'll just highlight right click on it then make group then if i want to edit the group i'll just right click and edit group so then pick our push and pull to to drag select the face and drag up the next thing is our offset so select the face offset then i want to use my line tool to create a boundary and to separate faces then use the eraser tool to clean up and now select the face and use my push and pull tool to drag and once it gets to a flat face it indicates and then once you click on that it deletes that face automatically so now we've created our basic shape that we want to use to uh, experiment with move with the move tool 
So now we have selected the move tool then so we can pick from any anchor and you drag you can pick choose any anchor to pick and drag move from a point to another then we can hold on the control to duplicate so this is how it, so now i've selected the control then it drops the parent so it will release the parent once you click on the control and if you now can you see i've clicked you see that plus sign around the tool showing that you you've activated the copy tool so now i'm still going to do the same uh click then drop here now the move to moves your object and drops it you can also move um, a point of your model which sometimes can um, if you don't need to if you don't have to please don't do that because it can um, deform the model <laughs> sometimes you might just need it you can actually use it to deform your model if you actually want to if you need to so that is that about the move to so now we move to the rotate to so once I check the rotate to rotate to as as we all know use it to uh, rotate about a particular point so now we've seen the compass symbol so we can establish the first point that's the point at which we want it to rotate about then the next point has the anchor then we rotate so we've seen now that I rotated it 90 degrees you can also type in uh, into your a value into the measurement bar which uh, is the same for almost all the tools you can precisely try to type in what you want you can also click about you can click on a point and snap it to uh, whatever point by pressing shift to pin it along an axis so now i want to select a face by highlighting so i'm in the group now i like make sure you've selected the whole face then move with an anchor point then drag so it works uh, also as um, the push and pull will work sometimes if it is on a regular face of course so now i want to show us the scale too so the scale too we have different anchors a lot of anchors here so we can play with it on our own and check how it works the diagonal anchor scales your model in equal ratio so that it doesn't deform the model and as you also hold it as you click on it you can type in your value now i've typed scale 2 that means i'm telling it to increase the scale by 2 and that's that about the scale 2 now we want to create a basic coffee table just to exercise with a different tool the first tool we'll need is the line tool so i want to create a face a rectangle face first so click on the first point then i want to type 600 mm as a length then so i will hold shift to snap along the green to meet and to form a face so now we have our face i want to make group then now i want to edit the group so we click on select the push and pull to about 10 millimeters as a thickness now i want to click on the move and press the control to create a copy along the blue axis at about um 350 millimeters now let me drag 
along the blue again and reduce it by 150 mm so now we have the top and the base of our coffee table now and i'm just going to create the legs so by using um, my line tool to create another rectangle so this is very easy to create within minutes seconds you've created what you need to create now just by simple uh, basic principles of sketchup so these are the basic principle these are the basic tools that you need to just get started so i'll make that group and then push it up again so we see we are using some tools frequently so now i want to make components so let, let me make components so just right click make component and let me name it table legs so let's name it table legs and now i will copy it before working on it at all now that i'm sure that whatever i do on any of them is replicating directly and automatically on the other wherever it is so i'll just continue without worries to work on just one i'll double click on that to edit this in the group then i want to use my offset to round so just select the lines the boundary and then we offset in let me type in 40 then i select the face and push until i get to the to a face and then it deletes it so now you can see we have the legs now i just want to reduce the base to move it up let's move by 40 millimeters then i want to have a little bit of recess at the edges so i would still use my push pull to so i want to you see 15 you want to type 15 along the direction type your value along the direction then you can double kick that value to replicate it immediately on another uh, face so now i want to just type 20 millimeters towards the outer direction so as to uh, create a kind of recession on the base so now we can see we've come to the end of our basic uh, coffee table that we've just created and you see how simple and how easy it is to use uh, sketchup basic tools to create whatever so in the next tutorial we're gonna be refining this and we're gonna be taking it to a uh, complex level uh, not complex level really but we're gonna be exploring other tools like the material the paint bucket and then even trying to render this out into a realistic table and so we've come to the end of the lesson uh, we were able to touch some basic tools and also to demonstrate it by creating a simple coffee table so in the next lesson we're going to be exploring the paint bucket to the text the measurement and even taking our models to the next level by trying to even render thanks for watching this is pro design see you in the next lesson thank you